Hello, welcome back to the session. Now we have five contributed talks and third person for this session will be Dr. Chandan Giri. Dr. Giri received his B.Tech degree in Computer Science and Engineering from Calcutta University, Kolkata, India and subsequently Masters of Engineering in Computer Science and Engineering from Jadavpur University, Kolkata and the PhD degree from the Department of Electronics and Electrical Communication Engineering, IIT Kharagpur. Earlier, he served as a lecturer at the College of Engineering and Management, Kolaghat. He served as an assistant professor in the Department of India Information Technology, IIEST Shippur from 2008 to 2018. He is currently serving as an associate professor in the Department of Information Technology, IIEST Shippur. His research interests are wireless sensor networks, testing and design for testability of integrated circuits, especially 3D and multi-core chips, microfluidic biochip design and test. He served as a conference or symposium co-chair in many IEEE conferences such as VLSI design, VLSI design and test, IACD, IIST, CS, RC, etc. He is a member of IEEE and ACM. I'd request Dr. Chandan Giri to come on the dais and present his session, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Tanushree, for kind introduction. And good morning, all. <clears throat> so this session, we have uh, five contributed talks. Uh, so everybody, uh, those authors are actually, uh, I, I, I hope that uh, all the authors are present here who are actually presenting uh, all those uh, papers. Uh, so everybody, every authors will get 20 minutes time uh, for the 15 minutes for the uh, presentation and five minutes for the uh, question answer sessions, okay? So first author, a uh, first paper presentation will be on presentation of evolution of one dimensional homogeneous cellular automata using monoid action. Uh, authors are Sriya Ghosh, Sumita Basu. So, uh, who is presenting? Yeah. So, please come. Uh, present your paper. Okay. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to be a part physically at ASCAT, second day. So I will talk on representation of evolution of one dimensional homogeneous cellular automata using monoid action. So myself, Sriya, and I have worked with Professor Shumita Basu on this work. So every one of us over here more or less know what a cellular automaton is. So I won't spend much time over here. It's a computational model, which was proposed by Neumann and Ulam where uh, evolution of the local cells uh, induce the global evolution patterns. So the motivation of our work was uh, we wanted to study the evolution for a pattern of dynamical systems over time. And uh, we all know the set of transition functions of a cellular automata, uh, they form a monoid. So uh, with this, um, uh, motive, we tried to uh, 
predict the evolution pattern of dynamical systems in the light of monoid action. So I will be discussing very briefly on the preliminaries and the results on monoid action and how we have tried to uh, depict um, CA transitions in terms of monoid actions. Okay, uh, this also I will just uh, state that we have taken our usual triplet um, where Q represents the finite state set and uh, the set of configurations and the global transition function as our CA. Uh, that is a standard definition. And um, then we have considered binary operation, which is defined to be the composition of mappings. Now we know that set of all global transition functions form a monoid. So we directly come to monoid action. Now monoid is a well-known quantity for us. Uh, it's a set where you have a close and associative operations and uh, there is an identity. So when we have a monoid with respect to some binary operation, and if we have a non-empty set X, so, and we define a function of the form, uh, phi is uh, M cross X, giving a value in X. So if such is the function where two properties are satisfied, identity belonging to the monoid E dot X gives me X, and any two points of the monoid M1, M2, their composition when acted upon on X gives the same value as M1 composed, M2 composed X. So if such a thing occurs, that function is called to be a monoid action. Over here we have defined left monoid action because M is on the left of X set. Similarly, we can have right monoid action as well. Now we come directly to the results. Okay. In uh, such a monoid, um, we'll have, if we define a relation like m dot x1 is equal to x2, where x1, x2 are elements of the set x, then uh, such a relation is a pre-order or a quasi-order relation, which means we have reflexive relation and transitivity. So naturally the identity uh, is there, element is present, so reflexivity holds, and if we take M1, M2, then we will see that um, M1 dot X1 gives me some value X2, and if there is some X3, uh, um, then M2 X2 gives X3, and then uh, very standard transitivity uh, operations, uh, if we um, put, we will see that it holds, so the theorem holds that it's a pre-order relation. We have denoted uh, by this symbol, the pre-order relation. Now we take uh, um, any path sort of, xi is a member of the set x and the elements xj belonging to x, if they be such that there is some m in the monoid where m dot xi gives me xj. So all these xj's, uh, we are taking it in that uh, a set, that we are calling it as a pre-order class, because this class will be satisfying my pre-order relation. So if such be the case, then we will see uh, that like that xi, we, we will get other xi's also. All the uh, union of all those, will give me back my main X set. So it's like we can uh, a sort of uh, find um, different subclasses of the set X. So later if we uh, consider equivalence relation, then it will get equivalence classes. For now we haven't considered equivalence. We have just restricted ourselves to um, reflexivity and transitivity. So the classes are known as pre-order classes. Now M was my monoid. If we consider any element of M, so the set generated 
buy that element in like m m1 m square m cube and so on that set also forms a monoid because identity is there if we have m to the power r m to the power k belonging to m so naturally m to the power r class uh, k also belongs to m and uh, eventually the transitivity transitivity also um, will hold uh, uh, rather the associativity property will also hold m to the power r m to the power k and m to the power l so uh, that way we see that closed and associative properties along with identities there, so it's a monoid. Now with that, we take the set generated by M. Since that is also a monoid, my monoid action required that I have one monoid and another finite set, uh, well-defined set rather. So uh, the set generated by M gives me a monoid and we have our original uh, any set X. So when X is acted upon the set generated by M, that also will hold my monoid action. So that has been uh, done. So, uh, and what is this uh, path which I get? So if Xi is any path, uh, Xi is any point of the set X, the path generated from, initiated from Xi will be Xi, mxi m square xi and so on that will be the trajectory initiated by xi so capital m was my monoid so if we take any uh, specific m belonging to the capital m and with that we have the generated set and we take a path xi dependent on that small m that will be a subset of xi uh, of the capital M monoid. So we'll you, uh, taking all the unions of all these trajectories, we'll get back the, uh, the path which is generated by all the elements of the monoid. So xi m is also a pre-order class by definition. I will not get too much into the proofs for now. I'll just uh, state the results. Now we have a lemma. Uh, M is belonging to M, then uh, M to the power N Xi, we define it as Xi plus Xi plus N, when uh, the nth term of the iteration. So obviously, uh, M Xi will be denoted by Xi plus 1, m square xi will be xi plus 2 and so on m to the power n will be xi plus n so like this if we have a path uh, so suppose we start from xi and then xi plus 1 xi plus 2 xi uh, plus r minus 1th term and then if the x rth term comes back to this xi, so this is a periodic path and the periodicity is r. So, uh, uh, so when x um, starts that periodicity, uh, I just, just uh, the periodicity over here is r and the trajectory is periodic from the initial state. We started off with xi. The same, uh, similarly, if we have periodicity from any rth step, so r plus 1th step, uh, so from r plus 1, we go to uh, i plus r2 minus 1, and then it comes, comes back to some middle position, and then it has a periodicity, a cycle. So that this will be periodic from r 1th step, and the periodicity will be r2 minus r1. So since all the, um, we, we, if we take a finite step, finite uh, set, so we have only two options, either it's stable or it's periodic. Mm -hmm. So periodicity can be from initial state or it can be from after some uh, steps, so from the rth step. Okay, now if uh, we come to another uh, definition, we were now um, 
uh, so long thinking about the path. Now, if we look at the monoid, so uh, we consider a subset of the monoid M such that all those M's which keeps an XI fixed, that also gives me a, a sub monoid of the set uh, of the monoid. So um, MXI, we denote it as MXI, so contains all those m's such that m into xi will be fixed at xi so that is known as my stabilizer submonoid this forms a submonoid and it's the stabilizer submonoid okay so now we have already seen that the set generated by m forms a monoid so uh, we will also have a submonoid from the set generated by M. So that is uh, written like that, M to the power J. So that will also give me my uh, submonoid. Mm, over here, we will get some corollaries. I will not spend too much time with the corollaries because I want to show how I have been using monoid action to to depict my um, uh, configurations of my dynamical systems. So I will just skip before uh, going to that portion. I'll just state the last um, result. So um, over here, if we have some monoid and Xi is periodic from initial stage, and Xj also is period having the same period periodicity, they will have the same periodicity if xj also belongs to a, uh, that path of xi. Okay, now I will, uh, let us see how we have depicted our configurations. So if ct is my configurations and tau, tau is my transition function, tau ct gives me ct plus one. So like that I will be defining my, um, um, monoid action. Over here, I take the set, finite set, to be the set of all transition functions q to the power z. And my monoid will be formed from the transition, uh, the set generated by any transition function tau. So if tau is my transition function, the set generated by tau will be tau, tau 1, tau square, and so on. That will be a monoid. And that, when acted upon the set of all global transition functions, will be giving me a monoid action. And my set of uh, transition functions will be an uh, uh, M set. Or over here, M is my tau, so tau set. So I have uh, shown the steps, how it, has, it can be uh, obtained. Uh, so this was um, my main focus and uh, now CT is my configuration. So the path uh, which I get starting from the initial configuration CX tau bar, that is the trajectory which starts from initial configuration C, uh, CX. So uh, like we have got for XI, this is for CX, this is the path and the action of tau on QZ is a monoid, which we have uh, proved over here. And I'll come to uh, one or two examples. Um, in this way, we have taken an example of a four-celled homogeneous CA having states at zero and one. So Q to the power Z four, they will be giving me all my set of configurations. Now, uh, the set of all uh, configurations that will uh, represent my set and uh, tau when acted upon this I have taken transition function to be a constant function so the configuration um, con constant function everything going to one so the con initial configuration one 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 that will be the only configuration will be which will be stable from the initial state all other configurations will be stable from the next step so um, my uh, stabilizer in these cases will be um, that tau e and tau 1 for 1, 1, 1, 1. And for the rest of the configurations, it will be only my uh, identity mapping because only for identity mapping, everything remains stable from the initial step. 
Okay, I will just quickly go on to another example where we have the boundary conditions uh, to be periodic. And if we suppose uh, take another uh, state to be 0, 1, and 2, similarly, we can fo uh, form this. And we have taken the transition function to be a left shift action. So uh, like 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 2, 2, 2, these three configurations, they will remain stable from their initial, uh, from their initial state. Others, uh, maybe after one step or two step, uh, they will uh, go on and having a, have a periodic uh, configuration. So periodicity in case of 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 0, and 2, 1, 0, these three configurations, they'll be same only. Likewise, uh, in the same concept, suppose if we have a null boundary, then also uh, we can uh, formulate our uh, stabilizers likewise. So this was just a brief outline of my work. So um, what all we have worked on is some properties of monoid action. And then we have tried to formulate monoid action generated by transition function acting on the set, a set of all configurations of a CA. And then we have uh, seen some examples of how uh, we can actually implement those monoid actions for our specific examples. So some of my references were these. My work was mainly based on Castillo Ramirez and uh, Secherini Silverstein's work. So, uh, and of course, uh, Jarko Kari's paper is always our uh, motivation for working in cellular automata. Thank you. So, any questions? I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, so, <clears throat> firstly, you have taken the finite case, finite yes. case, finite state. Okay. Will this work? Uh, you know, your structure. You know, construction will work for infinite uh, sphere. Yes, we have plans, but for now, this was our initial work. We started, and then our next uh, target was to uh, make. We have the, done this for monoid action. So we are now trying to work on group action, if that invertibility also can be worked on. And then maybe we will definitely go on to infinite cases. OK. Uh, is this the cycle, you know, the monoid you are defining, is a cyclic monoid? Cyclic, yes. Cyclic. Uh, for the specific examples, yeah. if, uh, if we do not have, because we have taken finite case, so either we can uh, consider it to be stable from initial position. Right. So uh, periodicity like that, we can have zero, zero period or something we can consider and do. Or otherwise, it will come back after from some so time. Cyclic monoid. Be. Yes, because it's finite for the cases. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question here. So will this make any difference if instead of cyclic monoid, if we use Cyclic subgroup. The next presentation, uh, the the topic is layer cellular automata and pattern classification. Authors are Obisek Dalai and Subrutopal. So Obisek is present in the paper. Good morning, everyone. My name is Abhishek Dalai, and uh, today I will be presenting on the topic lead cellular automata and pattern classification. So, first, I will give some brief introduction about elementary cellular automata. So, it was first developed by Stephen Wolf from uh, during the uh, 80s. So, uh, so, elementary cellular automata is basically a one dimensional cellular automata model, and uh, each cell is having uh, two states, either zero or one. And the set of neighboring cells are its immediate left and right neighbors. And uh, on the basis of this uh, state of uh, neighboring cells, the next generation is being decided. 
So about uh, let's help our automata, the real world inspiration behind this model is that sometimes we make some decisions uh, after consulting with our parents uh, or family members, but uh, due to some uh, external influences from our society or from our far relatives, uh, we may end up changing our decisions. So similar to this, we have tried to uh, incorporate this uh, particular uh, scenario in our model uh, in a way that a cell will also get some type of influence from far away cells uh, along with uh, their uh, uh, immediate neighbors. So here we are using two rules in two different layers. Uh, that is uh, rule F in the layer zero and uh, rule G in the layer one. and. Uh, that's why this uh, particular model is uh, termed as a layer cellular automata and the uh, rule f is basically the 256 elementary cellular automata rules and uh, rule g is the proposed rule so about the model so here on the initial configuration first i apply the rule f which is the eca rule in the layer zero then after that i will be getting the internal configuration and upon the internal configuration i will be applying the rule g in the layer one in order to generate the final next generation. So about the rule G is that uh, in rule G, we divide the whole uh, cell configuration into uh, equal sized of blocks. Then we count the number of ones present in each of the blocks. Uh, along with that, uh, that particular blocks, left block and right block uh, are being used in uh, for uh, calculating the number of ones and I will be performing the averaging function and uh, the main motive behind this averaging function is to balance the number of ones present in that particular block. So here I have uh, shown uh, in the picture that uh, the cell size here is uh, 27 and I have divided this particular into three blocks. Each block's uh, uh, size is nine and above that uh, the number size been uh, represented are the number of ones present in those blocks. And uh, the cell updation, either we should increase the number of ones or we should decrease the number of ones, took place in the middle block from left to right uh, configuration. So uh, here we are using uh, a balancing parameter called uh, k, means how many number of ones should be uh, increased or reduced in that particular block. So I will be calculating the average of the number of ones in all the blocks. Then I will be subtracting with the number of ones in the middle block. So if the number of ones uh, or K value is greater than zero, then I will be reducing some number of ones in that uh, middle block. Or if the value of K is, uh, uh, sorry, if the value of K is greater than zero, then I will be reducing some number of ones from that middle block. And if it is uh, greater than, uh, sorry, and if the value of k is less than zero, then I will be adding some number of ones and uh, increase the density of ones. So, and if the value of k is equals to zero, then there will be no changes in the configuration. <coughs> so for this, we have uh, taken variable uh, uh, block sizes length that is ranging from one to n, where n is the CA size. And the division of blocks are starting from the zeroth index onwards. And uh, here uh, in the example, you can see that in the end block, uh, this I have uh, divided into three and uh, three blocks. I mean, the size of the blocks is three. And in the uh, last block, you can see that there is uh, one cell less. So here, in order to accommodate that uh, one more cell, we have considered here the periodic boundary condition. So I will be taking one cell from the first block to complete this whole configuration. So here I have taken an example. So uh, the middle block is having nine ones, the left one is having seven, and the uh, right one is having six. So here the k values came out to be two, which uh, indicates that the number of ones in the middle blocks are overly populated. So eventually we will be reducing two ones from that middle block. So it will be then seven, uh, seven ones in that middle block. Similarly, in the example two, the number of ones are uh, less. So here the K value calculated as minus one. So uh, we will be increasing the number of ones in that 
middle block. <coughs> so as we using uh, ECA rules in the upper layer and uh, rule G in the lower layer for same ECA, as we change the B, the dynamics uh, are also changing along with that. So in other words, the, we can say that the LCA is uh, block sensitive. <coughs> So here I have shown the changes in the dynamics that are taking place. Uh, this is uh, rule 46 and this behavior, as you can see in the green, green is the original behavior of rule 46. And that's why it has been marked as uh, green and uh, rest are uh, presented as uh, red because they were showing uh, the changes, dynamic changes. So as we reduce the number means block uh, sizes in the second figure, the block size is 400. And uh, in the third is 200, like that 50. So uh, from the periodicity, it has changed to the fixed point configuration. So here one point to be noted is that when the block size is equals to the size of the cell, then the rule G that the averaging function will not be applied. As uh, you can see in the first picture, that's why it was green. And the uh, cell size here is 500 and uh, uh, that's why, and the block size is also 500. So the uh, averaging function didn't apply on that. Similarly, in this also, I, I have uh, tried to show when the block size, uh, when a particular block size cannot perfectly divide the configuration. And along with that, I have compared the uh, block sizes which can perfectly divide the whole configuration. The second image, the first image is the original behavior and the second image is the uh, when the block size can perfectly divide the configuration and the third and the fourth one are uh, the cases where the block sizes cannot divide the whole configuration perfectly. As I have shown in the previous picture, marking it as a green and adding a one cell from the front so here you can see that the basic nature of this uh, particular model, uh, sorry, for, for this particular uh, rule, uh, that is uh, the locally chaotic and uh, others are also maintaining that particular behavior. So there is no significant change in that, uh, their, uh, in that behavior from its parent. And uh, here, the rule 106, which is a chaotic rule, as we reduce the number of ones, uh, as we reduce the number of blocks, so at uh, the critical block point, that is 127, it uh, converts to all zero uh, configurations. And here, uh, and here are some of uh, other convergence that can be seen. Uh, the first one here, that is a chaotic rule and it is uh, getting converged to all zero configuration. 142 is a periodic rule and uh, which is getting converged to all ones. And similarly, rule 14 and uh, rule six are periodic rules which are getting converged to a fixed point. So uh, some about uh, convergent uh, LCS. So the definition, uh, LCA is called as convergent LCA. If the CA converges to a fixed point from any initial configuration, uh, for any block sizes that uh, ranging from 1 to n. And uh, if a convergent LCA is having one fixed point in uh, such LCA is been termed as a single attracted LCA. And if a LCA is uh, having more than one uh, fixed point, such LCAs has been termed as multiple attracted LCAs. So the ex uh, experimental study, we have performed our experiment on different sizes of N. Uh, N here is basically the cell size and uh, where it is ranging from four to 11. And uh, we have taken all. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, taking all two to the power n as initial configurations and uh, different block sizes so, uh, that are ranging, uh, ranging from one to n. So here, uh, each uh, initial configuration has been ran uh, about two to the power n minus one iterations. So these uh, graphs uh, here represent the number of LCS that are getting converged versus uh, different block sizes. Uh, for the first one, the block size the first one, the block size, uh, sorry, the cell size is four 
And uh, as the um, block size increases, the number of LCS that are getting conversed are slowly reducing. Uh, similarly, for different block sizes, uh, you can see. So for creating a good classifier, we have excluded all the LCS which are uh, associated with a single fixed point uh, attractors and a large number of uh, attractors, specifically the LCA with ECA 204. Because in the case of two, uh, ECA 204, every initial configuration tends to converge to itself. That's why it will give a very huge sets of uh, at, uh, attractors and it will be not uh, useful for the pattern classification. So we, uh, in this experiment, we have only used uh, multiple attractors, uh, LCA, as pattern classi classification. So let us consider uh, n equals to 11, which is uh, the cell size. And uh, we have found a few, around 148 number of LCS, which are the candidate for this proposed uh, pattern classification. So we have created here two class pattern uh, classifier on the basis of the two disjoint data sets, P1 and P2. So every class has a set of configurations that all leads to a same fixed point. So in order to build a, a good classifier, so some fixed points should uh, go to one class and the rest of the fixed points should go to uh, other classes. So for training, uh, here the LC has been loaded with patterns uh, P1 and P2 and uh, are updated till it reached to some fixed point. So the total number of patterns that, and, uh, that converge on each attractor is being uh, recorded. So here the attractor is stored in class one if the number of attractor from uh, P1 uh, is the more than the number of attractors from P2. Otherwise, the attractor is stored in the class two. Here, N1 and N2 is basically the count of the number of attractors, uh, sorry, number of patterns that are getting converged to a particular attractor. So uh, we have used this particular equation in order to calculate the efficiency. So the training phase outcomes, uh, like the LCA with the maximum efficiency and the two classes that I will be getting will be used for the testing phases. So here I have shown one example for Mong3 data set. So uh, the two pattern sets uh, having uh, patterns, 60 patterns and uh, 62 patterns. And uh, the cell size of these patterns are 11. And uh, uh, for the example purpose, I have used LCS 68 and uh, the block size here is nine. So in this table, uh, the attractors uh, column, you can see that uh, those are the uh, sorry, uh, decimal representation of the attractors. And uh, below, N1 and N2 are basically the count of uh, the, uh, the pattern sets, P1 and P2, how many times that particular attractors uh, observed in those uh, 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 pattern sets. So uh, as uh, for the first column, you can see the attractor 0. Uh, four is the maximum. So I will be uh, sending that particular attractor zero to the class, uh, particular uh, attractor zero as the N four is greater than three. So into the class two, and uh, I will be adding this uh, uh, four with the success variable that I have taken, which is initialized with zero. Uh, similarly, for the second one, uh, 16, for 16, uh, 9 is greater than 6, so I will be sending this particular attractor to the class 1, and I will be adding the success variable with uh, 9. Similarly, I will be doing for all, and the success variable uh, comes out to be 91, and uh, efficiency turns out to be 74% for this. Like uh, this, we have uh, found that uh, LCA 200 and uh, the block size 9 has the maximum efficiency of 95%. So LCA uh, 200 and 9, uh, along with the two classes that I got in the training phase, I will be using this for the testing purpose. Uh, in testing the attractor sets that I got from the training and the two classes uh, are being used and along with that we are taking uh, uh, fresh new patterns uh, sets that are P1 and P2 
and the patterns P1 and P2 are put into the LCA, which is then updated till it uh, converges to any fixed point attractor. The effectiveness of the LCA has been determined on the fact that how many uh, how many patterns are uh, perfectly classified by the classifier. So the example here that. Uh, uh, fresh new sets of P1 and P2 has been taken, like uh, 227 and 205. And for the example purpose uh, from the previous, I have again used that particular LCA, 68 and block size 9, and the two classes, class 1 and class 2, as an input. So here, for the first attractor, I will be checking this particular attractor belongs to which of the classes. So you can observe here the zero is belongs to class two. So we have found it. So uh, in the class two, so for the end two, I will be taking the success variable and uh, add it with the 25. Similarly for the second one, um, this uh, attractor 16 belongs to the class one. So I will be adding 36. So similar way, I will be adding the success uh, value and the efficiency turns out to be 68%. So we have implemented our proposed model on eight different data sets and uh, this uh, table uh, describes all the different uh, data sets, their LCA sizes, uh, efficiencies and the proposed. And uh, this is the comparison with some other classifiers and uh, uh, in some of the cases, in some of the data sets like MONG3, Tic-Tac-Toe, uh, Hepatitis 1, Hepatitis 2, uh, the proposed LCA has been proved to be much more efficient as compared to its other counterparts. So I would like to conclude here is that, uh, so, we propose here uh, an alternative CA uh, called a layer cellular automata in which you know, we have used two layers in two different, uh, two rules in two different layers. And we have identified the convergent LCS that were utilized in the construction of the two pattern classifier after evaluating the dynamics. So in Monk 3, all those data sets I have shown outperforms other classifiers. So for the future work, uh, we have only experimentally investigated this uh, convergent LCS. Next, we will be trying to found, uh, find the theoretical foundations of the convergence of LCA. We would like to generalize the working of the layer uh, one and uh, the observation of the changes in the dynamics, such as the class transition and phase transitions uh, we will like to observe it when the rule G has been applied, and we would like to explore uh, this particular particular uh, model on two-dimensional cellular automata model, like uh, uh, game of life. We would like to apply this particular model on that. Uh, thank you. So will it be possible for me to ask a query? Am I audible to others? Our next paper is on uh, nonlinear maximal length cellular automata. Uh, authors are Sumit Adok and Sukanna Mukherjee. So Sumit is presenting the paper. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the title of the paper is Nonlinear Maximal Length Cellular Automata. So, uh, the basic outline of this paper is uh, at first, we uh, define some uh, basic definition of linear and nonlinear maximal length cellular automata. And then we develop some theorems, some lemma, and some properties uh, which help us to generate the nonlinear maximal length cellular automata. And, uh, after that, we also develop some techniques and put some method 
that is information flow, blocking word, and single length cycle. And finally, we develop a algorithm which can generate the nonlinear maximal length cellular automata and using of linear maximal length cellular automata. So uh, this is the basic overview of cellular automata. Uh, maybe we can move forward. Uh, the only one point we have to I have to mention here that is uh, I used the one-dimensional two-state three-neighborhood CA as a non-uniform and which followed by the null boundary condition. So uh, this is the basic definition of maximal length CA. So uh, an n cell CA is maximal length if the CA consists of only two cycles. One is length one and another is length of 2 to the power n minus 1. That means if all the configuration except one are lie in a single cycle, then the CA is maximal length CA. This is the transition diagram of an four cell CA. The rule vector is 6, uh, 90, 150, and 80. So obviously there is a 2 to the power four number of configuration that is 16. And from the figure, you can check that the 15 configuration are lie in a single cycle and there is only one configuration that is all zero or lie in a single cycle. So that is the example of one maximal length CA and the rule vector is linear. So that's why it's a linear maximal length CA. So uh, a maximal length CA is non-linear. If in the rule vector, there are at least we put one, put one non-linear CA, then the CA is non-linear CA. This is the basic definition of non-linear CA. So in our previous work, uh, we generate the linear maximal length CA. And from that particular part, we can uh, get some support from the matrix algebra because there is a relation between the linear maximal length CA and primitive polynomial. So in this case of non-linear maximal length CA, there is no support from that particular side that is matrix algebra. So at this point, so our challenge is, so can we extend the support of nonlinear maximal length CA to the linear maximal length CA? That means can we get support from the linear maximal length CA? Or in other words, we can say that can we generate the linear maximal length CA using the nonlinear maximal length CA using the linear maximal length CA? So that is the main challenge actually. So uh, this is a technique we have applied in this paper actually. So suppose there is a n, n cell CA and this is the linear maximal length CA. So in case of linear maximal length CA, there is only two valid rules. That is rule 90 and rule 150, which applied in the over the all cells. So if we want to generate the non-linear CA, so at first we have to replace one linear rules by a non-linear rule. Maybe we can do for one or more cell, but uh, as, as an initial state, we can uh, we can replace only one linear rule by non-linear rule. Then the CA will be the non-linear. So our so our proposed technique is so when we put the linear rules, replace the linear rules by a non-linear rule, then the CA will be the non-linear CA. And after that, we have to check that that the previous CA and the new CA both the structure are same or not if the both the structure are same then the new ca obviously a non-linear maximal length ca so that is the proposed technique but it uh, it looks very simple but it's not actually so the technique we have we we ever applied in the generate the non-linear maximal length ca that is first one in the synthesis of reversible ca because of uh, when a CA is maximal length, so first criteria is CA must be a reversible CA. So, so uh, a CA with arbitrary rule vector cannot be in general a reversible CA. There is particular some method or some proposed method for uh, using this method, we can generate the reversible CA. So there is total 256 rules and out of rules, 256 rules, there is only 70 rules which may which are balanced so uh, from the uh, from one rule we can generate eight bit of rmts and if the uh, if there is uh, 
fourth term empty value is zero and fourth term empty value is one. Then the rule is balance rule. So out of 70 balance rule, there are only 62 balance rule are participate in the reversible CA. Also, there is an efficient scheme which can generate the reversible CA uh, by some like Professor Sukant or that's and also some others develop this method actually. Now the uh, second method, whatever we applied in the maximal length CA, that is the blocking word. So uh, in the cellular automata cells, if there is one change in the uh, uh, one particular cell, that effect will be to the other cells. So that means actually there is information flow in this next step by this particular cell actually. So, uh, so, if, so if this information is blocked in some position, like there is a cell like 0 to n and in particular position that is k position the information is blocked that means it at every next step the information is like 1 or like 0 so this is that means we can block this particular cell so when when some of the sequence uh, some of the sequential steps are blocked so we call that is the blocking word in this particular ca so as an uh, so uh, to define the blocking word, at first we have to define the subconfiguration. So what is sub what is the subconfiguration? Suppose there is a configuration of for n cells here. So there is obviously there is a zero to n minus one cells, and uh, when we took one particular position to positions, obviously sequential like k to k plus one, k plus two, k plus three. When we took that particular position, so that is the subconfiguration of this configuration. So. Uh, so in a CA, obviously there is subconfiguration will be blocked. That means subconfiguration block the information flow. So this is the example of blocking what. So this is the this is the seven cell. Uh, one, two. This is the six cell CA, and this is the chain of configuration. There is a cycle of length four actually, and you can see that the what one 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 that is in the bold phase. So each configuration in the next step the the uh, the the cell uh, the cell next state value is one 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 always so the uh, so particular that position block the information that means if some if some uh, position has blocked the information flow then obviously the ca is non maximal length because we can't reachable with the other configuration and uh, uh, there is maximal possible cycle length if there is uh, this is the six cell ca and there is a three position are blocked that means the maximum possible cycle length is 2 to the power 6 minus 3 that is 2 to the power 3 this is the maximal possible and for an n cell ca if k number of uh, cells are blocked then the num number of possible cycle length is 2 to the power n minus k so this theorem is very obvious uh, this is the if a ca is not a maximal length when it contains a blocking word so uh, this is the condition to check in a particular CA existence of blocking word or not. So this is the three points which we have developed to find the blocking word in, in a CA. And uh, the idea we have is, used here, uh, that is the self-replicating RMTs uh, with the concept of equivalent and sibling RMTs. Now, uh, selecting rules. As an application of blocking word, so there is a uh, so much rule which also always participate to generate the blocking word. So that is one of the left independent rule and one of the right independent rule. So a rule is uh, right independent rules when the next step value of the sibling, all the sibling RMTs are same. And a rule is left independent rule when all the next step value of the equivalent RMTs are same. So at uh, at uh, initial we have a 62 rules which can participate to generate the maximal linear non-linear maximal length here now after cutting edge we get the only 16 rules which can participate to generate the non-linear maximal length here so this is the another property of uh, maximal length here you can uh, pbs you can see that that in a maximal length here there is only one single length cycle so if in, if, in a, uh, if uh, in a CA there is a more than one single length cycle, so obviously the CA is a non-maximal length CA. So using this lemma, we can find that a given CA, there is one or more single length cycle or not. Uh, basically it takes, uh, it takes only a polynomial time. So easily we can find out that uh, the CA is uh, more than one single length cycle or not. 
if the ca has more than one single length cycle so at initial stage we can we can remove we, we can uh, we can get our decision that the ca is non maximal length ca so suppose uh, when we replace a linear rule by a non linear rule suppose uh, uh, in a particular position when we replace a linear rule by a non linear rule then some of the next state values of rmt will be changed like uh, there is a eight rmt so if we take the rmt 6 and 7 when we replace the rules then the rmt values are changed then the successor also change means if the previous ca we can get the configuration y from the x then new ca we cannot get that maybe we can get the y from z actually so so some configuration will be affected when we change the rules actually so this set of configuration we called as affected configuration and how to check that that both the cas are same structure so for this reason we define that term actually i isomorphic so when the both both are the transition diagram on same and there exist a non empty set of configuration c that means uh, c must be not null actually uh so uh, this is the example of affected configuration and isomorphic ca so first ca is transition diagram for the four cell ca that is 690 150 and 80 and if we change the uh, rule 150 that is the linear rule by a non linear one that is rule 86 so at that time only uh, two rmts that are 6 and 7 rmts our next state values are changed for that reason we get the number of set of affected configuration is 4 so in the second figure you can check that so the configuration are in bold face that is 0111 that is uh, 0111 another is uh, another is 1110 and this is the 0110 and 1111 so this four configuration is affected when we replace the rules so so we now we have to check that the both cs are isomorphic or not so we get that from the figure easily we can check that that both cs are isomorphic because there is same cycle structure but how can we get that so if all the affected configuration are lie in a single cycle means affected configuration are in a single cycle then obviously the other configuration will be in same cycle so we only check that the affected con set of configuration are in a single cycle or not and we don't check the other configuration so that is the main motive when we develop our algorithm actually and this is the some properties of affected configuration the first one is at least two rmts remain un unaffected when you replace a rule that means there is total eight rmts so maximum there is uh, affected rmts will be six and second one is second one calculate the total number of affected configuration which we derive from the number of rmts and third one is the uh, property uh, and it uh, all the configuration that is affected in the following condition that means uh, when all the configuration are affected at that time we check that when we replace one rule at that time if all the configuration are affected then we we reach to the worst case so we have to we have to follow these properties when we replace the rules so uh, this is the sufficient condition to get the maximality so if if we have a linear maximal length ca and we can uh, replace the one linear rule by a non linear rule and further we have to check that that all the affected configuration are uh, lie in a single cycle or not if all the affected configuration are lie in a single cycle then the ca is maximal length otherwise the ca is non maximal length so uh, this is the uh, some important steps of our develop algorithm so at first we take a, as a input of our algorithm that is the one linear maximal length ca obviously there is only two rules rule 90 and 150 then followed by some method we have change particular one or more position to the linear rules by non linear one and then we check there exist a blocking word in the new ca or not if there is a blocking word in the new ca then we take our decision that it's non maximal length and if there is no blocking word then we have to move forward 
second step we check there is a uh, only one single length cycle or more than one single length cycle if there is a more than one single length cycle then we take our decision at this step that is the c is non maximal length and we bake actually if there is only one single length cycle then we move forward further we check that whether all the configuration are affected not if all the configuration is affected by the following properties then this case is host case that means we need exponential time to check so uh, for that reason we don't follow this actually so and uh, then we calculate the total number of affected configuration and then check the all the affected configuration are in a single chain or not if all the configuration are put in a single chain or lie in a single chain then the ca is same structure according to pvs1 that means pvs ca is maximal length so next ca obviously the maximal length so however the host case complexity of the algorithm depended on the length of the chain chain means when we when we connect the affected configuration when, when we calculate the affected configuration to check its sing, uh, uh, single chain or not so that scenario is totally depend on the complexity so this is the same example which we, i take in the pvs so uh, the, there is only four uh, number of affected configuration suppose uh, if we start from that configuration then we have to reach from that post to here that means somehow we can uh, somehow we can ignore some configuration uh, so that means we cannot reach to the host case so uh, in this procedure we generate the non linear maximal length ca starting from the linear maximal length ca so uh, this is the this is the result of our algorithm uh, if one is the linear maximal length ca and we derive the f2 from the linear maximal length ca which is non linear and in f2 in the particular position we have we have replaced the rules the rules is the in uh, last columns and the position in the before the last columns now uh, this is the discussion so uh, basically we develop a conjecture uh, for this particular topic uh, which is not written in our paper that is for an every n we can generate non linear maximal length ca but still date we cannot prove it so this is the future work of mine and then thank you any question so sumit what is the complexity of doing all these things sir uh, if there is a host case is come then obviously it is 2 to the power n because we get the n cell ca and total there is 2 to the power n number of configuration so obviously it's 2 to the power n but uh, if that is not host case so the complexity to totally depend on the chain from which position we have to start it to get the affected configuration if we reach all the affected configuration suppose uh, uh, by uh, starting from a position within the n by 2 cells we can get all the affected configuration so that time the complexity totally depend on n by 2 so this is the basic funda actually so all time we have to follow that maybe we cannot get into the ex, uh, host case that is exponential so for that reason um, from initial we have to start or get some technique so that we can remove the new ca that it is not maximal it is, it is not maximal length how uh, in starting point we can check that the ca is maximal length or not so that's the main motto actually thank you okay. so our next presentation on uh, analysis of one dimensional four state cellular automata rules and dna evolutions authors are arijit ghosh suchitra behra sagarika padi and Sudhakar Shahu. Mm -hmm. So, presenter is your name? Origin Ghosh. Okay. So, Origin.
Good afternoon, everybody. I am Arijit Ghosh from Institute of Mathematics and Applications, uh, Bhumaneswar. I represent our paper entitled Analysis of One-Dimensional Four-Stage Cellular Automated Rules and uh, DNA Evolutions. This is the outline of our presentation at the outset. Uh, I represent the abstract of our paper, followed by introduction, mutation rules, classification of rules based on mutation, space-time diagrams, and the STDs, that means the state transition diagrams, classification of rules using STDs based on isomorphism, discussion on point mutation and amino acid sequence, reflection conjugation and conjugate reflection operators, and at the last, we have the conclusion and future work of our paper. Here is the abstract. The main purpose of this research article is to analyze the different mutation rules applied in a DNA sequence that are characterized by the straight transition diagrams and space-time diagrams like the cellular automata. This set of rules evolved from the DNA constituents of the nucleotide bases, that is the adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thiamine, generating a huge number of patterns. Various color patterns are generated using Python programming language, uh, and their mutation behaviors are characterized by their STDs. The 256 rules are again classified into five different classes based on the uh, number of nucleotides uh, being fixed or varying in the rule definition. The similar looking STDs are grouped to form equivalence classes and their graph theoretic properties have been studied. The impact of the space-time diagrams to study point mutations and amino acid sequences is highlighted. A hybrid architecture uh, has been proposed which combines a non-deterministic automaton and a deterministic CA rule for point mutation. For analyzing the dynamics of amino acid sequences, the four-state, three-neighborhood CA rules have been characterized with the help of reflection, conjugation, and conjugate reflection operators. The results obtained from our study will help in analyzing the CA rules and other base two and base four dynamical systems. All of us are aware of the definition of the cellular automaton. A cellular automaton consists of a regular uniform lattice with discrete cell values called states, and the state of each cell is influenced by its neighboring cell values on the application of a local transition function. Cellular automata as a simple mathematical model is being used to investigate self-organization in patterns occurring in many biological phenomena. The patterns are generated using algorithms uh, imposed on a programming language by inculcating mathematical ideas. The graphic representations obtained count for intuitive subjective impressions when analyzed suitably. With motivation from the concept of the CA rules, we hereby undertake an urge to describe the genetic changes, that is, mutations occurring in a DNA sequence. In our paper, the mutation patterns in a DNA sequence are characterized by one-dimensional CA rules with four states for the nucleotides. Those are the adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thiamine. We seldom use the nearest neighbor uh, concept. Rather, the cell of concern itself is considered as the neighborhood. Adhering exclusively to one-dimensional three-neighborhood elementary CA rules, we extend to one-neighborhood base four system. The DNA sequences have been visualized in terms of a four base number sequence, and its evolution has been modeled using the state transition diagrams and the space time diagrams. Our paper uh, proposes the various method naming schemes of the mutation rules that are being used to find the STDs and space time diagrams. Using mutation rules motivated by the conventional CA rules as a tool, an attempt has been made to study the DNA sequence of the COVID virus. Among the various operations in mathematics, here only one operation is being uh, propagated, that is mutation, in which the nucleotides interchange among themselves in a DNA sequence evolution. So we urge to define the mutation mapping like this, FM from ACGT to ACGT, or FM from 0, 1, 2, 3 to 0, 1, 2, 3, where that M is the mutation rule number. Since there are four places of change, so there are a total of 256 possible mutation rules. Various authors have used the various uh, naming schemes, like the biologists, uh, they often use these four letters ACGT to represent the four nucleotides, so also we have kept the same. According to the Wolfram Code Naming Convention, these uh, nucleotides can be represented by the four numerals 0, 1, 2, and 3. These nucleotides can also be represented by the binary uh, codes, that is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Uh, again, to get a visualization of the space-time diagrams, uh, these nucleotides can be encoded using colors that is red, blue, black, and green. Here I do represent all the, uh, uh, the uh, 256 mutation rules, uh, explaining only one. For example, I consider that will F A A A A, the first one. Okay, so I read from bottom to top. So, which suggests that those nucleotides C, G, and T are 
being uh, mutated to A and A goes to A, that means A remains unmuted. And its corresponding that uh, decimal representation is given there by F0, that is 0, 0, 0, 0. So here I do represent in this table all the 256 mutation rules possible. According to the nature of the mutation rules, the rules, uh, the mutation rules can be classified into five different classes based on the number of nucleotides being fixed or mutating. So in class one, we have 81 such rules where all the four nucleotides are being mutated. In class two, we have 108 such rules where only one nucleotide is fixed and the other three are being mutated. In this uh, class three, we have 54 such rules where two nucleotides are fixed and other two are mutating. And in class four, we have 12 such rules where only one nucleotide is being, is being mutated, but the three nucleotides are being fixed. And in class five, we just have only one rule, which is identified as the identity rule, where actually no mutation occurs. STDs are the graphical representation of the mutation rules, which provide a visual representation of all the four states that a finite state automaton can have. And the, the space-time diagrams are uh, can be obtained uh, by mapping a, a cellular automaton from one configuration to the next at all time steps. And in fact, the space-time diagrams are the effect of the mutation rules as denoted by the STDs. We apply these mutation rules over a DNA sequence obtained from that SARS-CoV-2 dat uh, virus database of length 228 and have obtained the various STDs and the space-time diagrams. So here, for example, say rule F0 or FAAAA. So uh, the STD is this one, the left side one, which denotes that, uh, that G is mutated to A, the center one is A, and bottom one C is mutated to A, T is muted to A. Uh, a and A remains unmutated. When applying this mutation rule to that DNA sequence, so we can observe that at the top is the DNA sequence. Just after the first iteration, everything becomes A. That means A becomes dominant. Similarly, this is another the uh, uh, study and the space-time diagram of the identity rule. From the space-time diagram, we can observe that there happens no mutation at all. Just by the help of the Python programming language, we have obtained the various studies and the space-time diagrams. Now, uh, by the uh, nature of the mutation rule, since there are four nucleotides, so those can be represented as the four vertices of a graph. And by the nature of that rule, so one nucleotide gets muted to, it, uh, to another nucleotide, so that can be represented by a directed edge. So by the structure of this uh, STD, they are again classified on the basis of the isomorphism of graphs into two types. They are connected graphs and the disconnected graphs. The connected graphs are again classified into seven types. They are the chain-like structure with an attractor, CLSA shift, four cycle, one three cycle, one edge, two cycle, uh, CLSA diagram, 36 in numbers, then star connected, single nucleotide dominance, uh, then star connected loop, and then next we have the disconnected graphs, which are again subclassified into 10 types. They are two cycle, one attractor, one basin, one isolated, two cycle, one isolated, then one basin, two isolated, two cycle, two isolated, the identity rule, three cycle, one isolated, one basin, two isolated, and two basins. Next, I would like to uh, put forth a discussion on point mutation and amino acid sequence. A point mutation is a genetic mutation where a, a single nucleotide is being uh, altered, deleted, or inserted from a DNA sequence of an organism. The point mutation have variety of effects in the downstream protein product based upon the specifics of the mutation. Other types of mutations are swapping, inversion, and scrambles. Analogous to biological mutation, this operation is used to maintain genetic diversity from one generation of a population of genetic algorithm chromosomes to next. The point mutation usually involves a probability that an arbitrary nucleotide in a DNA sequence will be mutated from its original state. A common method of implementing the mutation operator involves generating a random variable for each nucleotide in a sequence. This random variable tells whether or not a particular nucleotide will be mutated. Although in case of the space-time diagrams, as applied, uh, we have applied the CA rules at all positions. There are rules like in class one where all the four nucleotides are, are being mutated, but confined to only four time steps. Similarly, in class two, three, and four, the nucleotides are being mutated, but in three, two, and only one time step. And in class five, we have only one rule, that is the identity rule, in, uh, where actually no mutation occurs. Thus, from the space-time diagram, we can uh, observe that there happens point mutation, as some of the nucleotides are not being mutated. 
Now, using these two, uh, 256 deterministic CA rules, it is not possible to study all the different mutation dynamics. Various authors have used uh, very, uh, different models to, uh, to uh, study this behavior. Some have used the non-uniform CA rules instead of uniform or probabilistic or hybrid models in combining the deterministic CA rule with some probabilistic method like Markov chains, etc. If the model uses the stochastic cellular automata, then probability of point mutation can be done at any position in the DNA sequence. So the evolution of the DNA sequence after repetitive mutation can be stated at all points. Thus, by studying their impact through space-time diagrams will give us a global picture of evolution dynamics of possible point mutations in different locations. We have proposed an architecture where the stochastic feature of the cellular automaton is taken care of by the non-deterministic automaton, which provides a position where point mutation takes place. And then a rule out of 256 deterministic CA rules will be applied. A pseudo-random number generator used here is a type of non-deterministic automaton, which is considered an intelligent machine that will provide us a position in the ith location where the mutation rule will be applied. On the other hand, the probabilistic models may or may not provide us with the exact position for mutation, or if it does so, then that will be time consuming. Now we conjecture that our non-deterministic Turing machine model is efficient and also equivalent to other hybrid models that uses non-uniform stochastic cellular automata. Construction of its corresponding deterministic automaton model is also another interesting uh, theoretical problem that can be studied in future. So this is the architecture that we have proposed in our uh, paper. This is the pseudo-random number generator which uh, provides a point i and that i is, is exactly the uh, uh, position of mutation where the mutation rule is applied to get the desired output. Next on amino acid and uh, its properties. To study the after effect of mutation from a biological point of view, the study of amino acid sequence is highly essential. And amino acid is a fundamental molecule that uh, serves as building block for proteins. The three consecutive DNA bases, also called as the nucleotide triplets or codons are translated into amino acids. A protein consists of one or more chains of amino acids called polypeptides whose sequence is contained in the or encoded in the DNA sequence. A gene's DNA sequence determines the order of amino acids that make up a protein. So a um, mutation in the DNA sequence often results in changes in amino acid sequence as well. To study the dynamics with a four state one dimensional uh, cellular automata rule with zero radius neighborhood, only 256 different CA rules are possible. Moreover, it is insufficient to get a full comprehension and characterization of the space dynamics using these STDs and the space time diagrams. On the other hand, if we consider four state one dimensional CA with three neighborhoods, there are a total of four, four to the power, four to the power three. That is such a huge number of rules. To study the space dynamics, again, with the help of the STDs and space time diagrams is a tedious job. However, one way of uh, doing so is by grouping all the CA rules into classes according to their dynamical equivalences by suitably defining conjugation, reflection, and conjugate reflection operators for the four states. Now, Again, with a four state one dimensional CA with zero radius, defining reflection rule is irrelevant as there is, uh, as there is uh, no uh, concept of the neighborhood being involved, though we can, divide, uh, though we can define the conjugation uh, rule. So to define reflection, conjugation and conjugate reflection operators uh, for four, uh, we have to define four state one dimensional three neighborhood uh, cellular automata where the codons form the three dimensional system uh, in the CA. Since there are three places of change for the uh, codons, so there are a total of 64 possible uh, triplets. Hence, any DNA sequence of length 64 can be considered as a mutation rule. In our naming convention, the complement base, uh, base of A is T and the complement base of G is C. So now we define the one dimensional four state three neighborhood mutation rule by the function, by the function G from 0, 1 to 3 to the power 3 to 0, 1 to 3. Uh, now for two mutation rules, suppose say G and H, the conjugation is defined like this G P1, P2, P3 equals to 3 H, 3 minus P1, 3 minus P2, 3 minus P3. The reflection rule is defined like this G P1, P2, P3 equals to H, P3, uh, P2, P1, that is reversed. Conjugate, uh, conjugate rule is defined like this G P1, P2, P3 equals to 3 H minus 3 minus P3, 3 minus P2 and 3 minus P1. 
where P1, P2, P3 are the nucleotides. For example, take this uh, rule and mutation rule 6, reflection rule is given by this number, conjugate rule is given by such a huge number, decimal number, conjugate reflection is again given by this decimal number. Which uh, So this study we can um, have from this uh, lookup table where these are the codons and that is the rule 6. Uh, it is actually a mutation rule of length 64. So by the calculation, the, the reflection rule is given by that one and the conjugate rule is given by that one and the conjugate reflection given by the last rule. This is 64 length, this DNA sequence. So from this lookup table, we can have an algorithm where we can find the reflection rule. So we have to rearrange the, the nucleotides as per position given in the lookup table. And from that lookup table, we have to write the reflection rule. But the conjugation rule can be written from bottom top approach in a reverse order and then take the uh, complement of each of the bases. Similarly, if we uh, to find the conjugate reflection rule for the given mutation rule, we uh, can apply the same technique to the reflection rule of the given mutation rule. For example, uh, let's consider this. This is a, an arbitrary mutation uh, rule of length 64. So its reflection can be obtained from the lookup table. But the conjugate rule can be obtained by just reversing that mutation rule and uh, by taking the complement of, of each. So thereby we can get the conjugate rule of the given mutation rule. Similarly, the conjugate reflection rule can be obtained by uh, reversing the reflection rule and then taking its complement will get the conjugate reflection rule of the given mutation rule. I come to end of our paper. And the conclusion is the specific study is one conceptual representation of rules in case of any finite length sequence with limited number of characters. These rules are useful for representing mutative behavior of the sequence in various forms. The graphical representation is useful for visualization of the rules. Repetitive application of same rule may lead to a conclusive state which may be periodical or fixed immutable state. A studies illustrate the behavioral as aspects of the mutation of individual characters. We can have the future scope from our work. A similar study can be extended to non-uniform mutation rules. We will also explore the idea of a repetitive crossover operations starting from two DNA sequences instead of one. We will study how these mutation rules can be used for barcode generators, encryption, and other digital image processing techniques. A comparative study between the 256 mutation rule and the 256 cellular automata rule can be taken up uh, considering the three neighborhood system. In case of four state three neighborhood CA, uh, we will study the Z parameters and other uh, CA characterization parameters over classes obtained by reflection, conjugation, and conjugate reflection operators. These are the list of references. Thanks. Any questions, suggestions? Okay, it was very nice. Uh, I have one or two questions. Yes, you uh, mentioned that all the rule space uh, when you had mutation, uh, the rule space they are uh, not giving any uh, periodicity, right? That is what I got from all the 256 rules, whatever it be, after three or four steps, are they all? Yes, the yes, yes, they are repeating. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So this one I. I have, I have mentioned in that one slide that uh, four yeah. time steps, that means, so here we have so the, uh, the space-time diagram. Okay, so whatever space will be the rule, we will ultimately after two, three steps, it's going to be It's again of... repeating. So actually we do not okay. need so many uh, iterations just to, uh, okay. to get any idea of that. So mm -hmm. that is found out by simply looking at the rules. Okay. And there was one where you had that pseudo random number generation slide. So by pseudo random, you're generating i, and that ith position, you are looking at the mutation. So is that mutation what you require? The target mutation is fixed, and you are accordingly generating, or? No, no, no. So what happens is that. Um, Actually, that happens point mutation. That means mutation uh, has occurred naturally at, at exactly one point or say two points. But what we are doing is that we are trying to find it out, but our conventional usual, we are just trying to find it out. Now, for example, uh, a probability that yes, mutation has happened at that particular place. So I have to check for the first cell, second cell. Now, if it is a length, say N, we have taken 220, say 1000. So, so it is like time taking. 
so pseudo random number generator is an algorithm okay it is like a, a thought okay that it will directly identify the exact position of mutation and uh, that can be done in one time step so process will be quick and then mutation rule can be applied over here to find any desired result okay so where are the positions of mutation that you are determining by c yes that is thank right. you thank you so uh, we can uh, we can uh, you can discuss uh, at the time of lunch break also so because of uh, we are running out of time so please you can continue so thank you uh, origin thank so you nice presentation on the uh, idea of the operating communication of appreciation for it thank you sir thank you all so in this session there is a last talk uh, the topic is on design and analysis of regular clock based twist to four decoder using t gate in quantum cellular automata or the qcl so presenter is authors are the amit kumar pramanik <coughs> sudeep to devnath joyanto pal and vibha sen uh, presenter is amit kumar pramanik so amit please Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Amit Kumar Pramanik, and uh, the title of my paper is Design and Analysis of Regular Clock Based Twist to Four Decoder Using T Gate. And the uh, basic uh, this outline I will discuss in my presentation. And before going anything, I first want to discuss how what is why uh, QC is required. We know that current CMOS technology has many disadvantages, like uh, feature size. We cannot reduce the feature size further. It has high power dissipation and uh, low device density is there, and many other problems are there. To solve these problems, we have different technologies. QCA is one of them. And in case of the right-hand side diagram, uh, QCA belongs to Pion CMOS, where the size of the chip is constant throughout the future years. Now, in came, coming to the basic part of QCA, in QCA, the, the uh, basic element or the elementary element is QCA cell, where uh, four quantum dots are there, in between these two electrons are there present, diagonally adjacent to each other. In case of QCA, the elementary gates or the basic gates are uh, the majority voter and inverter. The majority voter has three input, there it is represented in the right hand side, and uh, A, B, C are the input, and F is the output. By fixing any one of the input, uh, we can realize AND gate or OR gate. To realize AND gate, we need to fix it, it uh, zero in zero, and for OR gate, we need to fix it in one. The truth table is given in the right hand side. In case of inverter, in QCA, many structures are available, and uh, between them, I have selected the two most stable structure. The first one is the diagonal structure, and the right one is the uh, both uh, two directional structure. Next. Uh, in case of QCA, as it is a nanoscale, the defects may occur at any time, due to, as it is a very small. So many types of defects are possible. Here I have discussing, I am discussing some of them. First is misalignment defect, where the input cell X is uh, misaligned compared to the previous structure. In case of displacement defect, the X input cell is displayed from, displaced from its current correct position. And in case of extra cell defect, the extra cell is doped. Extra cells are do doped in the both sides of the X cell. And both of the, uh, all the defects are compared or discussed from, uh, comparing by the majority voter structure, which I have discussed in the previous slide, this one. And uh, in case of missing cell defect, the X cell, the one of the input cell is missing. In case of rotation defect, the any cell may here, the middle cell is rotated by theta degree. Due to these defects, the output is erroneous. So we need to handle these defects in a, uh, we need to some quite technique. Next, T-gate. Uh, T-gate is one of the gate where three input, uh, sorry, uh, two inputs are there and one output is there and one fixed polarized cell is there. The fixed polarized cell is uh, represented in different color and it is presented and it is, uh, sorry, it is can be uh, realized in different layer compared to the other cells here this uh, this fixed polarized cell this one and uh, this fp and this is doped in the different layer compared to the other cells 
and by fixing the fixed polarized cell in one or zero we can realize nand gate or nor gate last like majority voter by fixing one and zero we can realize and gate or or gate in the same way by fixing one or zero we can realize nand gate or nor gate next qc clocking we know that uh, clocking plays a vital role in case of qca and it synchronizes the information flow and in case of clocking four phases are there uh, switch phase hold phase release phase and relax phase these are the basic part that's why i'm not going to the detail and uh, in case of regular clocking in case of qca clocking we need some certain rule to realize any circuit and this part is regular clocking scheme in case of regular clocking scheme many schemes are available i will discuss four important clocking scheme in my uh, in my part just like this diagram where uh, present the right hand side at the below the clocking uh, clocking cells are there sorry clocking where is there above that qc cells is there about the above that metal metallic uh, cell metallic layer is there and depending depend, uh, sorry, depending on the requirement the qc cell is connected to each of the qc where here 0 degree actually represents the clock zone 0 and uh, then then 90 degree represents the clock zone 1 and in that way next regular clocking as i have told you that i i will discuss four clock four important clocking scheme in my part so the usc is the where the uh, the clock region are uniform but it has one disadvantage is there to realize where crossing we need multi-layer crossing scheme so it is very much difficult to realize in case of qca so this one is very much dif uh, this one is very much difficult to realize in case of qca so this one is uh, disadvantage of qca in, uh, in case of USC, in case of RES, in case of RES, it provides three directional input, but to provide three directional input, it, uh, in the uniformity of uh, the clock zone three, it's lost. In case of optimized 2D, it is reduced the wearing complexity compared to the other clock, uh, clocking scheme, but there we can easily find out that the clocking zones are shifted to the leftward or rightward. So due to this reason, it is very much difficult to fabricate. But in case of zigzag clocking scheme, it overcomes all the problems of other clocking scheme. And at the same time, it provides three directional input and output. Next, what is the motivation behind my work, research work? And uh, as I have discussed, the regular clocking, clocking scheme is very much important to see for synchronize, uh, for to flow the information flow. And in case of digital circuit, decoder circuit is very much important. Now on many research has uh, done to realize decoder circuit but not using t gate this research was done using different gate and the cost of this design is in the higher side this is, this is the most important uh, motivation behind my research and another another motivation is that you will know that as i have discussed that fault may occur in qca so it is required to test all the design uh, the fault tolerant capability of the design is it is required to uh, to test the fault tolerant capability of each design so this, this is the main three motivation of my research next uh, two is to four decoder this one is the basic schematic diagram is given and the truth table is given for two is to four decoder and the uh, output q0 q, q0 q1 q2 and q3 is given so next the proposed design in case of proposed design from the truth table we can uh, we have rearranged the output in that way and now according to this uh, q0 q1 q2 q3 and q4 we, now we can realize this is using the nand gate and nor gate because our target is to realize that uh, 2 is to 4 decoder using the t gate and from t gate we can realize nand gate and nor gate that's why you have uh, reconstructed or rearranged the output in the format of nand gate and nor gate now this one is the uh, schematic diagram for the 2 is to 4 decoder using t gate and the uh, we have used zigzag clocking scheme to realize this ticket. Now we have compared this uh, this proposed design uh, with in terms of cost, uh, power dissipation, and fault tolerant capability. First, in case of cost, we have considered two important two important uh, rules. First one is cost one, and second one is cost two. In case of cost one, it depends on area and the latency. In case of area, it actually the area of the circuit. And in case of latency, means the maximum number of clock zone from input to output divided by four. In case of cost two, it depends on number of majority voter. M stands for majority voter. I stands for inverter. C stands for wear crossing. And T stands for delay. Now at the below table, I have represented or tabulated the cost of my proposed design with the previous research. From the, from the table easily, we can find out that the cost two is very much less compared to the other design. 
बिकॉज इन कॉस्ट टू इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द मेजोरिटी वोटर इन वोटर क्रॉसिंग एंड टाइम डिले एंड डिले सो दैट्स व्हाई द कॉस्ट ऑफ माय सर्किट ऑफ द प्रोपोज डिजाइन वेरी मच लेस कंपेयर टू द अदर वन बट इन केस ऑफ कॉस्ट वन इट इज हायर साइड कंपेयर टू द अदर वन बिकॉज अकॉर्डिंग टू द प्रीवियस रिसर्च वी नो दैट व्हेनेवर वी यूज वी विल यूज रेगुलर क्लॉकिंग टू रियलाइज एनी सर्किट दे ऑटोमेटिकली इंक्रीजेस द सर्किट एरिया सो दैट्स व्हाई द मेन रीजन ऑफ इंक्रीजिंग द कॉस्ट वन but another key points of my research is that uh, we have used the regular clocking the previous research none of them uses the regular clocking so this is the main key point of our research and next is power dissipation for this purpose we have used qc designer e and uh, we have simulated this in the with the basic default parameter at 2k temperature and the values or the uh, power dissipation are tabulated in this table next the fault tolerant capability of the proposed design so for that we have uh, table or we have represented the circuit in that format so that we can easily detect one cell we easily detect any cell by this diagram means suppose we want to detect uh, this cell so this cell is number is m and 1 by this numbering we are detecting is individual cell correctly now in case of uh, fault tolerance capability uh, we have used qc designer and by removing one cell at a time we have tested the output but except the input cell output cell and the fixed polarized cell here in fault tolerant capability analysis two types of cells are possible first is correct cell another is a faulty cell in case the correct cell is that whenever we have removed the correct cell the uh, output of the circuit is correct but in case of whenever we have removed the faulty cell the out, uh, output of the circuit is wrong or faulty so in that fashion i have tabulated some faulty cells here b16 is one cell and uh, expected output for b16 is q1 q2 sorry uh, q0 q1 q2 q4 but the actual output is q0 q1 q2 and q-4 here deviation is in q4 output so in that fashion i have tabulated some faulty cells next the faulty percentage and the fault tolerant percentage i have calculated and i have tabulated in this table the faulty tolerant fault tolerant percentage is calculated by using correct cell total correct cell present in the uh, circuit divided by total cell except input output and fixed polarized cell into 100 and in case of same in the same way i have calculated the faulty percentage of cell sorry faulty percentage where faulty cell divided by total cell except input output and fixed polarized cell from this table we can easily find out that the faulty uh, fault tolerant percentage of our proposed design is very much high in case of q4 it is maximum for q4 output now uh, before going to the conclusion i want to say one thing in case of fault tolerant capability and power dissipation we have not compared with the previous research because this is the first work in this direction because till now the research has been done but none of them uses the t gate or regular clocking for this that's the main reason we didn't compare the, our work for fault tolerant purpose uh, fault tolerant purpose and the power dissipation purpose with the previous work and in case of conclusion uh, i want to conclude my presentation or the, my research i have we have uh, used a two sorry we have designed a two is to four decoder using t gate for this purpose we have used the zigzag clocking scheme and we have examined the proposed structure using the for the alternate capability and the power dissipation and another more important thing is that in our design we didn't have or we we have not used the majority voter according to the previous research we know that whenever we have used majority voter it increases the power dissipation so as a result the power dissipation of our proposed design is very much less so these are the reference thank you just one question so yes, your future sir. work how do you want to extend it yes uh, i have two future work that's uh, i have discussed that uh, one thing is that we can design many other important circuit just like adder uh, multiplexer by using t gate another future work is that for power dissipation and uh, fault tolerant capability we have used we sorry we have used only one technique two techniques are available so we will do that in our future scope a future work in thank you sir no uh you have you have done your work in a circuit level as i as i seen yes, yes. so uh, there is some signal transmission from one gate to another gate i i'm not getting the how we uh, is there any possibility to propagation delay from one shifting one to another how is there any fault during the propagation then how can we 
could you manage? I mean, you actually propagation delay we have calculated in QCA the number of clock zone from input to output divided by four. This is a basic logic to calculating the propagation delay. But there is no fault, there is no possibilities of faulty or fault, uh, fault can happen in this propagation delay. There is, fault can happen only doping at the time of doping the QCA cell. So that's why we have calculated the using the single cell omission effect. Single cell opposite effect means we are removing one cell at a time and we have checked the what is the output of the circuit. If the output is correct, it means that the cell is correct. We can remove that cell. So that's why we can calculate the fault tolerant percentage of the circuit. Thank you. Oh. No, sir. I, we, had, we, had, we are checking that what is the fault tolerant percentage or fault tolerant capability of the proposed design. Because in QC, as I have discussed, fault can happen anytime. It is a nano scale. So it is uh, required to check all the circuit. The, sorry, it is required to fault, uh, check the fault tolerant capability of each circuit. So that's why we have checked the fault tolerant capability of our proposed design. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So we uh, conclude this particular session now because all the presenters are uh, presented uh, very nicely and within time. So thank you all for your time and patience. Thank you. Thanks to all authors and um, session chair Dr. Chandan Giri. I would request Dr. Shukanto Dash to, uh, to present Dr. Giri the memento on behalf of the ASCAT team. Okay, with this winding up the morning session of day two, uh, it's time for lunch break. We shall assemble here at 2.30 p.m. And uh, we are requesting our online uh, participants to also uh, appear in this time. Uh, so enjoy your lunch. Thank you for joining. <laughs>